Turbo ciders are the easiest way for you to start brewing today. They don't take long to make, all they require very little equipment, and so it's a great way for you to dip your toe into brewing to see if maybe you want to start brewing beer in the future. With Christmas on its way, I wanted to show you a really easy to make winter spice cider that you could have ready before Christmas day. In this recipe, I'm using a bottle of sugar-free winter warmer Vimto. It might be quite hard to find in America, but a similar sugar-free winter spiced squash will work in this recipe. You're going to need a demijohn or fermenting bucket, which you go for depends on how much you're planning on making. I'm just making a gallon batch here, so a demijohn is perfect. You'll need airlocks and bungs or blow-off tubes. This will depend on which style of yeast you go for. A jar for your blow-off tube. A no-rinse cleaner such as Starsan or Chemsan. I use an entire 725 milliliter bottle of sugar-free winter warmer Vinto for this cider. You can opt for the version that isn't sugar-free, but it will alter how this tastes in the end. The reason that you should go for the sugar-free version of Vimto with this recipe is because if you want this to end up being sweet, like most ciders are, then you'll need to sweeten it somehow. And if you're planning on doing this as simply as possible and using bottles like I'm going to use, then you'll want some sort of sweetener. See, yeast will ferment all fermentable sugars inside of the cider. And so it's up to you if you don't mind that and you want it to be quite dry, but most of the time you'll want cider to be relatively sweet. And so the sweetener is not fermentable and so the yeast won't convert it into alcohol and so you'll still have a sweet taste in your Vimto cider and it will taste more like Vimto as a result. If you're planning on making a gallon of cider then you'll need four litres of apple juice. After a previous experiment in one of my other videos I went for a clear not from concentrate apple juice. In my experience this gives you the best apple taste to the cider as well as making it much more clear. To get the best results steep two English tea bags in boiling water for 10 minutes. You'll need about 200 mils per gallon of apple juice. The tea provides the tannins which you'd normally get from the apple's skins. Most of the time, apple juice from the supermarket will generally give you a hydrometer reading of 1050, and that normally results in a cider that's around 4.5%. Um, so if you want it to be stronger, you can add sugar, and that will be fermented by your yeast, but you've got to be careful not to add too much sugar because if you go too alcoholic, you will kill the yeast. So make sure that you don't go beyond the tolerance of whatever yeast you end up using. Personally, with this recipe, I didn't actually add any sugar to boost the ABV. And with the addition of the Vimto, this actually ended up being around 4%. But if I was making it again, I would have actually added some extra sugar and got it to about 6%. So yeast wise, I went for my tried and tested Lutra Kvike yeast. It has neutral esters and so I'll maximize the flavor of the Vimto and the cider rather than getting any orange taste or any other flavors that may be coming from the yeast. You could do the same or you could use a specific wine yeast or cider yeast or you could try out a bit of bread yeast but I wouldn't personally recommend it although some people have had success doing that. Because I was using Kvike yeast here, I went for a blow-off tube rather than an airlock. That's because Lutra Kvike yeast has a very aggressive start and it would have probably blown off the airlock. So a uh, blow-off tube is the better option in this scenario. So after I added the juice, the Vimto and the tea, I then added yeast nutrient. This is optional, but I do highly recommend it. It guarantees that your yeast will kick off its fermentation really successfully and it will be less likely to be stressed or not have all the nutrients that it needs to kick off a healthy fermentation. So after a week of fermentation, it was time for me to bottle it. I decided that I did want to make this carbonated, but to be honest, I could have bottled it and drank it straight away or not bottled it and drank it straight out of the Demijohn, uh, but I really wanted it to be carbonated. When I'm working out the carbonation of cider and beer, 
I use Brewer's Friends Carbonation Calculator, which is free to use on the internet. And it's been really useful for me as it helps work out the best amount of sugar to add to your cider without you accidentally causing bottle bombs. <laughs> so after a couple of weeks of letting this ferment, it's time for me to try this out. I've actually not opened a bottle yet, so you really are experiencing this for the first time with me. Oh, good sound, it's definitely carbonated, but it's not like <laughs> exploding out of the bottle, which is good. First impressions is that it's incredibly clear. Uh, looks really, really quite appealing. Uh, it does look like Vimto. Um, I have to say I'm a little bit disappointed as to how uncarbonated it is. It might be that I didn't add enough sugar or that it needs a little bit longer to ferment. Um, it's been really cold where I've been leaving it to ferment so that probably has slowed down the carbonation. Um, but let's uh, give it a smell. I mean, it smells like winter warm Vimto if you've ever drank that. <laughs> it smells delicious. Uh, so let's give it a taste. That really just tastes like winter warm Vimto. It's kept all of the Christmassy flavors and the smells. So you've got that kind of cinnamony, cardamom um, kind of smell to it and taste. And it's uh, just really quite pleasant. It does not taste alcoholic. This is about 4%, so I really do think I could have increased the alcohol content of this and made it a little bit more boozy because this really does not taste alcoholic. Um, it's very sweet and so I could have increased the ABV and still have had it not taste too boozy. It has got a bit of carbonation to it, but it is quite uh, a flat cider really at the moment. It could be that if I leave this for a few more weeks, um, that this will be more carbonated. I'm assuming that's going to happen. At 4%, it means that I could drink it throughout Christmas day if I wanted to. I'm not going to. I've got a Christmas beer that I'd sooner be drinking. To learn why, I prefer making ciders using concentrated apple juice rather than pressed apple juice. Watch this next video.